Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkle. She's sitting this video out, but we're gonna talk about Hogwarts Legacy, Harry Potter, JK Rowling, and the colossal failure that was this boycott because it is so, so much worse than activists who tried to get JK Rowling canceled could have possibly imagined. In fact, uh, the cancellation backfired to the extent that Hogwarts Legacy is being credited with revitalizing the entire Harry Potter franchise, meaning J.K. Rowling is going to have money rolling in for years to come. Again, in part due to the backlash. And in fact, the uh, BBC is supposedly going to talk about her situation in a, uh, a crime drama uh, situation with her dealing with these activists. The BBC, which has apologized a couple of times for calling her or allowing people to call her a transphobe, et cetera, et cetera, including the editor-in-chief of The Gamer. The Gamer, which is, of course, the video game publication that uh, publishes stuff like this. Hogwarts Legacy made us ignore transphobia, so what's next? Uh, what's next is lots more Harry Potter, lots more money for J.K. Rowling, and really, activists had a huge, huge, huge role to play in that because I think if the uh, backlash wasn't there, the interest wouldn't have been there, the game wouldn't be selling as well as it is. Man, every site has too many ads, too many ads. Um, in fact, Hogwarts Legacy sales have almost overtaken Elden Ring. So we're gonna talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Over 297, almost 300,000 subs. Hoping to get the 300,000. I think I might stop talking about the number of subs. It's kind of annoying. I'm kind of annoyed by it, but we would like for you to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much uh, for that. So let's let's talk about Harry Potter and uh, Lord of the Rings being strip mined. Now, I don't think all these projects are gonna be good. This is Warner Brothers talking about how they're gonna make new Lord of the Rings movies because you know it worked out so well for Amazon. That aside, they are talking more Harry Potter and they are specifically talking about the reception to Hogwarts Legacy as being a motivator for why they're going to make more Harry Potter. Uh, this is coming from Variety, Warner Brothers Discovery CFO on Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings franchises were only just starting to expand. So they said that there are Lord of the Rings movies coming, that there are more projects based on J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter franchise amid the success of video game Hogwarts Legacy. They talk about DC, they talk about James Gunn, and then they get down here to Hogwarts Legacy. DC is not the only Warner Brothers owned world that WBD leadership is interested in strip mining or capitalizing. Take Harry Potter as an example. The Wizarding World, the fact that we are enjoying this massive success with the Hogwarts Legacy launch 12 years after the last film came out shows that there's so much opportunity and we're only just starting to expand that. We've got the new Harry Potter tour coming up in Tokyo in the middle of the year. Long story short, I think this one company approach, great leadership in the individual business units, but coordinated franchise management is probably one of the biggest opportunities coming out. So, okay, long story short, uh, the Harry Potter franchise was waning. The Wizarding World franchise was waning because Fantastic Beasts was not doing very well, but that's because the Fantastic Beasts movies are garbage. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy is doing very, very well. People want Hogwarts. They don't want random adventures with random wizards in time periods that are almost completely disconnected from the main Harry Potter storyline. Hogwarts is recognizable, right? This is what they want. They want wizard kids at wizard school. That's what Harry Potter is all about. Hogwarts legacy sales have almost overtaken Elden Ring. This has come from Game Rant. Among strong reviews and positive fanfare, it's revealed that Wizarding World game Hogwarts Legacy has almost outsold from software's Elden Ring already. I don't see the disclaimer or the link to trans uh, rights uh, organizations or whatever. And they do mention J.K. Rowling in here, okay? They do, but they normally, up until um, the last week or so, it was like everybody who dared do an article talking about Hogwarts Legacy had to give a lengthy disclaimer, had to say they're just talking about it because they're trying to bring 
uh, you know, trans issues to the forefront, had to put a link to uh, charity, whatever. That was the only way that you got a pass from your peers, you know, the peers that would attempt to cancel you. And it's not working because everybody's talking about the game now because the game's selling like crazy. It's been revealed that Hogwarts Legacy has already almost outsold Elden Ring. Strong reviews and positive fanfare have led to Hogwarts Legacy having one of the strongest launches for a game in a long time. The sales numbers are made even more impressive by the controversy that embroiled their game pre-launch. A string of controversial comments from J.K. Rowling about the trans community left many fell, left many feeling they had no choice but to boycott it. Now, very few people felt they had to boycott it. They were told they had to boycott it. They were shamed. They were shamed into boycotting it or pretending to boycott it. And then people found out later they were actually playing it. Um by outlets like The Gamer, which has lost all of its credibility as a legit news source for video game news because it's all about activism, right? Uh, speed running event, games done quick, even banned Hogwarts Legacy from the charity marathons, a position that currently remains unchanged. They said they might change it in the future. However, developer Avalanche Software made an effort to distance itself from Rowling's comments, even including a trans character in the game. That is true. In the, uh, what, in the 1800s? <laughs> Uh, the report comes from Christopher Drang of GamesIndustry.biz, who claims that Hogwarts Legacy is on the brink of, has is, on the brink of outselling from software's hit Elden Ring. Uh, as well as this, in Europe, Hogwarts Legacy was the fastest selling game at launch for a generation, excluding the FIFA series. The launch sales so far are bigger than every Call of Duty game in the last six years. Holy shit. The launch sales so far are bigger than every Call of Duty game in the last six years. A remarkable feat given the popularity of Activision's flagship franchise. It was clear from the first two weeks that Hogwarts Legacy sales would be huge, but it has kept up the impressive momentum throughout the month to become the fifth best-selling game in total in the last 12 months. Only FIFA 23, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, GTA 5, and Elden Ring to cash out. Is this, is this English their first language or is this AI? I don't know. Um, anyway, this is in the UK. What makes the numbers more impressive is the lack of release on previous gen consoles, which we have mentioned before. Hogwarts Legacy PS4 and Xbox One versions were delayed and it's coming out in the Switch somehow. Somehow they're going to shove it onto the Switch uh, later this year. The thing is, is that the vast majority of people who play this game are probably going to play on like a PS4 or an Xbox One. Right, because PS5, good luck finding. Well, recently you can find a PS5, but it's very hard to find a PS5. Many gamers have struggled to get their hands on the PS5 and Xbox Series X due to a lack of availability. That is true. It remains to be seen how the success of Hogwarts Legacy affects the future of the series. Ultimately, the Harry Potter franchise will always guarantee a certain level of interest, but Hogwarts Legacy has particularly engaged audiences in a way that the recent Fantastic Beasts series have struggled to achieve. But everything we've been saying. It'll be some time before a potential Hogwarts Legacy sequel materializes, and for now, players will have to hope that Avalanche Software is hard at work producing DLC. Um, again, they're not really shame. They mentioned the J.K. Rowling, but they're not really shaming the audience for playing it. And uh, I think what could potentially happen. There have been rumors about this before, and we actually speculated as soon as the game came out that I could totally see HBO doing a Hogwarts Legacy series. Last of Us is doing very, very well. I need to watch it. People actually say it's pretty good. It says pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll see. But um, I could totally see them doing that. Being like Hogwarts Legacy is money in the bank. Everybody loves Hogwarts Legacy. Everybody loves uh, these characters now. They love this version of the world, this time period. They, they're familiar with it. We can do Harry Potter. We can do wizard kids at wizard school without even touching the the main cast because it takes place like a hundred years before and we can still get all that stuff in there that people love and uh, tie it into the game. And then when the next game comes out, we'll sell even more. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll make Hogwarts legacy stuff in the theme parks too. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah, again, activists uh, really helped sell this game. They really did because the backlash to this game, the, uh, overreaction to this game in particular because jk rowling makes money in so many other places the overreaction absolutely positively helped drive sales which has solidified harry potter as being a franchise that's here to stay it looked pretty dodgy with fantastic beasts but congratulations guys 
uh, your hard work has paid off. Harry Potter isn't going anywhere. It's making bank. It's going to continue to make bank. And you just put a whole bunch of money into J.K. Rowling's pocket. So I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.